Shalom Israel, this is Bishop Nathaniel. The Israelites have been scattered across the four corners of the earth, as prophesied in Deuteronomy, the 20th chapter. Here in Israel, united in Christ, we need your help to recover the remnant of our people. Teach them the gospel. Please help us, support us, and join or donate to the Booster Club today. Shalom. Hey, shalom, Mosai and Quest Bless. Again, it's me, Captain Gideon. You're watching 15 Minutes with the Captain, and my reader to my right is Officer Bezalil. Um, thank you for tuning in, and today's class is very simple. It's called Christ Taught the Old Testament. Because pastors, uh, priests, they all have the same teaching. The laws of Christ, uh, the laws of God is done away with. Uh, it's all about the New Testament, the hell with the Old Testament, right? Christ died so we don't have to do nothing in the Old Testament. So before we even start the class, here's the questions. The question is this. When Christ walked the earth, was the New Testament printed? Was it written? No, it was not. You follow? So what did Christ teach out of? The Old Testament. So um, let's go to Hebrews real quick. Uh, Hebrews chapter 9. Let's start at verse 16. The book of Hebrews, chapter 9, verse 16. For where is a for where a testament is, there must also of necessity be the death of the testator. For a testament is of force after men are dead. Otherwise it is of no strength at all while the testator lives. So Christ had to die. And when he died, the New Testament had power. You follow? Before he died, and uh, does not, does, that does not mean you don't have to read the Old Testament. We're going to prove that. So before that, there was no New Testament. Before the death of Christ, there was no New Testament. So Christ, this whole time, he's teaching to millions of people throughout the whole earth. Bringing them to repentance. What book was he using? If there was no New Testament, so how can you be? How can you say you're a Christian and you're a follower of Christ when He taught out of the Old Testament, but yet you don't want to touch the Old Testament? What book in the world can you fully comprehend if you start straight in the middle? You need the old and the new. You understand? So let's uh, go to um, Matthew five seventeen, because that's a famous scripture. Uh, people in Christianity like to use to say the Lord is done away with. Again, you do not understand the Bible. The book of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 17. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. Stop. Think not. Don't even put in your little brain that the reason I came here was to destroy the law or the prophets. Which means what? What the prophets wrote and taught. Christ said, I did not come to do away with none of those things. I did not come to destroy the law. I did not come to destroy what the prophet taught. So that means what? If he didn't come to destroy those things, those things still stand. Where do you find the laws and the prophet? In the Old Testament. So the Old Testament still stand. So if that first sentence is so clear, how can there's, there's a uh, confusion over the second one? Read. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. So the Bible said he did not come to destroy but to fulfill. So how can he not come to destroy the laws nor the prophets, but yet the fulfilled part to you means that he's done away with the laws and, 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 and the prophets. That does not make sense. 
And if you realize one thing, as much as they say that we don't have to use the Old Testament, you know one book they love reading though? The book of Psalms, the book of Psalms. If we don't need the Old Testament, why are you reading the book of Psalms? That's what you call picking and choosing what you want. Because Psalms is the psalm of prayers, they sound good. And certain psalms they will never hear, they will never read. Like let a two-edged sword be in his hand to execute vengeance upon the, his enemies. Dash his baby against the stone. You're not going to read those psalms in the church. Hip hypocrites. Hypocrites, that's what's in the church. So Christ came not to do away with the laws, not to do away with the prophets, but he came to fulfill. Let's read what he came to fulfill. Acts. The book of Acts, chapter 3, verse 18. But those things which God before had shewed by the mouth of all his prophets, that Christ should suffer, he have so fulfilled. So the prophets prophesied that Christ was going to come and die for us, and he was going to suffer. So Christ came to fulfill those things. So now to prove to you that the, he did not do it with the Old Testament, I mean, we already proved it, but we're going to go to some more scriptures. Let's go to John 15. John 15, verse 25. The book of John, chapter 15, verse 25. But this cometh to pass, that the word might be fulfilled that is written in their law. They hated me without cause. So, Christ quoted something that is written in their law. Okay, if he's quoting something that's written in the law, I mean, that what he just quoted right there, you can find it also in the old. You follow? Give me Psalm, right? 69. Verse, I mean, sorry, Psalm 69, verse 4, yeah. Psalm 69, verse 4. Because he said, uh, I'm going to read it again, say, But this cometh to path, pass that the word might be fulfilled that is written in the law. They hated me without a cause. So he quoted something in the New Testament. Where did he get it from? Because the New Testament did not exist when he was speaking. Let's read that. The book of Psalm, chapter 69, verse 4. They that hate me without a cause are more than the hairs of mine head. Read it again from the top. They that hate me without a cause. They that hate me without a cause. That's the prophecy about Christ. Read. Are more than the hairs of mine head. Are more than the hair of his head. Is that it or not? No. They that would destroy me, being mine enemies wrongfully, are mighty. Then I restored that which I took not away. So it was prophesied that people are going to hate Christ without a cause. And Christ quoted that scripture. Let's prove it one more time. Give me Psalm 35 verse 19. So if Christ is teaching out the old, and you say you're a follower of Christ, shouldn't you be teaching out the old as well? Not just the new, but the old. Because the scripture says what? I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me. The volume of the book does not mean just the old or the new. It means everything. The old and the new, including the Apocrypha. Read. The book of Psalm, chapter 35, verse 19. Let not them that are mine enemies wrongfully rejoice over me. Neither let them wink with the eye that hate me without a cause. So David was already prophesying what? They're going to hate the Messiah without a cause. Pilate says what? I found no fault in this man. But yet, was he whipped? Was he crucified? Because it was written already. They would hate him without a, a cause. They were going to sacrifice him and kill him. And torture him. Let's go. Uh, give me uh, Mark. The book of Mark chapter 12, verse 30. The book of Mark. Chapter 12, verse 30. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. Verse 29. And Jesus answered him. Who answered? And Jesus answered him. And Jesus answered, read. The first of all the commandments is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Read. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart. And with all thy soul, 
and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. So Christ answered the, the young man and told him, Yo, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. Where did Christ get it from? Let's go in the Old Testament. Let, that's what Christ said, I did not come to do my will, but the will of my Father. Wasn't it the will of the Father to send the prophets to um, prophesy? Wasn't it the will of the Father to give the law, statutes, and commandments? So Christ had to do what? Follow those steps. Deuteronomy chapter 6, uh, verse 5. Book oh, let's start at 4. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Stop. Uh, Mark says in uh, verse 29, Then Jesus answered the first and all, and all the commandments is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. So he's quoting what? The Old Testament. Read. Verse 5. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy might. So I'm going to read verse 30 in Mark. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. Strength is the same thing as might. So what Christ was quoting? The Old Testament. So how are you going to tell me you don't teach out the Old Testament? Then you're not a follower of Christ. Okay? Let's go to uh, Matthew 22, 39. Matthew 22, 39. Yes, let's get some more. The book of Matthew, chapter 22, verse 39. And the second is like unto it. So we're going to go into second greatest commandment. Read. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Thou shalt do what? Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Leviticus 19. We're going to go to the old. Christianity's worst enemy. But they love Jesus though. Meanwhile, Jesus taught out the Old Testament. My goodness. The book of Leviticus, chapter 19, verse 17. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. So, if you're not supposed to hate your brother in, in your heart, what are you supposed to do? Love your brother. Okay, read. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor, and not suffer sin upon him. Read. Thou shalt not avenge, nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people. Mm -hmm. But thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Uh oh, that's not what Christ said in Matthew? Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Where did he get it from? The Old Testament. So, when you talk about the laws is done away, thou shalt not. Isn't that a law? So, did Christ teach the law? The same law that's written in the Old Testament? So, how dare you stand before men and say, the law is done away with, and don't follow the Old Testament? You are leading your people to perdition. Let's get some more. Man, it's a shame. It's a shame for a man to go to school for eight years and still teaching garbage. The book of Luke, chapter 18, verse 20. Thou knowest the commandments. Do not commit adultery. Do not kill. Do not steal. Mm -hmm. Do not bear false witness. Mm -hmm. Honor thy father and thy mother. Okay. Let's go to Matthew 15 and 4. I want to add to it, but hold that look. Matthew 15 and 4. So the Bible tells, he just went through a whole bunch of law right there. The book of Matthew chapter 15 verse 4. For God commanded, saying, Honor thy father and mother, and he, and he that curseth father or mother, let him die the death. So we just read a whole bunch of laws. Right? Give me Deuteronomy chapter 5. And verse, we're going to start at 16. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 5 verse 16. Honor thy father and thy mother. So that's not what we just read in Matthews? That's what we just read in Matthews, right? Mm -hmm. Honor your father and, and mother. Where did Christ get it from? From the old. And does that fall in the laws? Yes. Christ taught the law. News flash. So that thing about uh, uh, the Lord's done away with is garbage. Read. As the Lord thy God hath commanded thee, 
that thy days may be prolonged, mm -hmm. and that it may go well with thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Read. Thou shalt not kill. Oh, wow. Well, then we read that in, um, what was it, Luke? Read. Neither shalt thou commit adultery. Oh, boy. That's what we Christ said in, in, in Luke. Read. Neither shalt thou steal. Neither shalt thou bear false witness against thy neighbor. So I'm going to read Luke 18 and 20 again. Thou knowest the commandment. Do not commit adultery. Do not kill. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Honor thy father and thy mother. What? How can you read this and tell me there's no law? Christ taught the law that's written in the Old Testament. Give me Matthew 18, 16. Matthew 18, 16. One last one. The book of Matthew, chapter 18, verse 6. But whoso shall offend... No, what? 16. 16. But if he will not hear thee, then take with thee one or two more, that in the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word may be established. So give me Deuteronomy um, 19. I mean, yeah, 19 verse 15. So Christ said, in the mouth of two or three witnesses, everything shall be established, right? Let's see where you get it from. Read the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 19, verse 15. One witness shall not rise up against a man for any iniquity or for any sin. In any sin that he may sinneth, that he sinneth, at the mouth of two witnesses or at the mouth of three witnesses shall the matter be established. Hey, listen. Too many verses. The matter is, is established. The law still stands. The Old Testament still stands. Start reading your whole Bible. With that, we're going to say Shalom. Most high and Christ bless. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission, minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how we're men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof, IUIC, we deliver the truth.